So once again, good afternoon to all of you uh, at this uh, next edition of QBS Talks. Um, this is a session that we will record, so you will receive the recording afterwards. That does not mean that you, you should not pay attention, of course. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to talk about how you can win more deals, always interesting, by using strong communication templates. Well, as looking at the uh, amount of people in the audience, I can imagine you're all interested in winning more deals. And in the next 60 minutes, I'd like to explain to you a practical way how to do that. So a few words as an introduction about QBS Talks. So this is a service that we deliver uh, from QBS Group. We believe that we should help the partner community where we can. Um, and today we are a, the European SMB distributor for Microsoft Dynamics. We used to have the title Master VAR, but Microsoft changed that over time. And today we're busy helping more than 400 Dynamics NAV, and I should change my slide, Dynamics NAV and CRM partners today in 17 countries in Europe, and helping them to improve their businesses. So these QBS talks, we try to deliver them on a monthly basis. Sometimes we have a few more, some, but at least one a month. And of course, you might over time be interested in what else we do uh, or even uh, consider to become a partner. So I thought it was a good idea to uh, include the link to the page where you can read more on our website on becoming a partner. few words about myself. So my name is Guus Krabbenborg. I've been working all my business life in the business application area. Um, um, over the last three to four years, I focused very intensively on training Microsoft Dynamics partners uh, on the business transformation from the old traditional projects on premise world to the world of cloud subscription and package software. Um, I delivered programs with the nice title R2R Road to Repeatability or after the name change Cloud SureStep for Dynamics. Further, I'm active in working with prospects, delivering workshops to help companies prepare for a choice in ERP and CRM. And as you all know, it's not an easy choice for all of them. Um, and next to that, I like to write blogs and publish blogs and books. Last summer, I even started with vlogs, video blogs, more on that uh, uh, in a month in directions. And I'm a frequent contributor to QBS Talks. So I think it's a good idea to start with a bit of context, right? We talk about winning more deals. And we talk about using strong communication templates. And I will introduce a bit also the importance of trust. So from my point of view, if I look at companies in the small and medium business area, arena, if, if they, these people are thinking about business solutions, acquiring new ones, buying upgrades, everybody is aware that business software goes hand in hand with huge investments. Of course, it's investments in time, it's investments in efforts and energy, in focus, and it, it includes investments in money. And even if you say, I go for subscription, I only pay as I go, then we still have to be aware that there's a lot of money involved in, you know, get their best people doing something else in the core business. Second point that I would like to mention is that, you know, the, how important it is for people in SMB, but I think it's all over the place, to make the right decisions. Because we all know that if you make a decision in any given system, with any given implementation partner and any given, let's say, implementation methodology, if you make a mistake, it's not easy to correct, right? So everybody is aware of the big impact. So I think failure is not an option. Again, not specific in SMB, but all over the place. What is specific for SMBs is that the people typically have limited experience in acquiring business solutions. And just like I said before in the introduction, I've been delivering workshops to prospective companies for the last 10 to 12 years. And I found out just by raising questions that over 90%, that's nine zero, 
of the people that I have have had in my training rooms, and there were hundreds of them in many countries, they did the implementation either for the first time or the second time. So again, more than 90% of the audience that I've seen in SMB uh, businesses do such a thing as a software selection one or two times in their life. If people do it more often, they do it professionally. So either they're interim managers or the selection advisors. So I think it's important to keep in mind right, that people in SMB are not experienced. So what can they do? Well, they have to rely on external advisors if there is money to do so, because not every sales cycle or buying cycle includes an external advisor. And if there's not money or time or whatever, for whatever reason, no external advisor, well, it might be you. They might have to rely on the vendors. So they have to rely on you. And the question, ladies and gentlemen, Nicole, how trustworthy are you? Can your prospects rely on you? Right? Can you build trust and how do you do that? So I thought, as we know, pictures say more than words. So, you know, in this situation, I'm not sure if you look at the picture, it's a, it's a great picture, of course, and it's a, a, a great, great situation. But I would say it depends on the person you are, right? If you're hanging, I would say probably in my metaphor, that's the prospect then you have to rely, you rely very much on the on the person on top, right? And if you are the person on top, you have, a, you have a responsibility of helping the person. Well, imagine who of your friends would you rely on, would you trust, you know, to take the rope from the top You hang while you're hanging there? And, and what does it need to build that trust? Well, if we look at trust in today's world, you know, trust is, I would say, as an historical low level. I think in businesses, in our societies, we never had so low trust as it is today. And we know that it's caused by many worldwide scandals, right? We know all the stories about the banks. We know what happened with Dieselgate, initially Volkswagen oriented. But over time, we see that there's many more of these competitors do the same. And we have seen, for example, what happened in FIFA with corruption and, you know, all things that, you know, people are not, should not be proud of. So, in my opinion today, there is a huge mistrust against companies that could be Volkswagen, that could be Microsoft or SAP, that could be your company, right? And I think it's very difficult today to build trust in companies. So, Naturally, what people do is they try to look for trust in individuals, the people they're working with. But if you're the representative of Microsoft with your company in a certain vertical market, I would say they're looking for trust in you. And you might say, whoa, that's a big task. I'm not sure if I can handle that. Or you might say, wow, this is a big opportunity. Because if we live in a world of mistrust, if we live in a world of Pinocchios with long noses, you know what happens if Pinocchio start lying? Well, we all know this industry is famous for long noses. And, and maybe while I say this, you start thinking for yourself, you know, how long is your nose as in Pinocchio? And how often did you make sort of a lie today? Or let's change it the other way. What can you do right, to build that trust? The trust that people are looking for. Well, I think it's fair to say that building trust specific in the IT branch is not an easy task. Well, why not? Well, first of all, we, we know, we experience that every day, that IT is extremely complex, right? It needs a high degree of technical knowledge or conceptual thinking. Um, and on top of that, we all know it's changing like hell, right? IT is changing faster probably than any industry over the last decades. On top of that, if you're not a native speaker in English, right, you see while well, you live in Netherlands or Serbia or Russia or whatever in the world, you know, the, the text, the context is written or spoken in English, which is not everybody's mother tongue. So that makes it even more difficult. And then just the point that I made a few minutes ago, people in small and medium businesses have limited experience, right? Because what I said, you know, they acquire systems one or two times in their life. Well, I thought, you know, why not put a 
picture uh, in my slide, and I'm not sure, probably you have seen pictures like this, right? There's Dutch text, so you can't do much without that if you're not a Dutch speaker. But it says on the left, this is what the customer says that he wants. And the second picture is, this is what the project leader understood from it. And number three is what the developer thought that the project leader said to him. Well, number four is how the programmer build it. Number five is how it is supported. Number six, that's a nice one. That's what we're gonna build, right? And then number eight is what the customer really wanted. And number nine is what the customer actually got, right? And as we know, that's with houses and trees and all kinds of examples. So this just shows how difficult it is, right? To make clear what you want, how, diff how important it is to communicate effectively. And to be honest, that's all what this webinar is all about. Well, let's see it from the positive side. If people like you, if people like you, right, they listen to you. But if they trust you, they'll do business with you. So if you're a nice girl, a nice guy, and people say, hey, I like the person, that does not mean they want to do business. So, you know, be nice is not enough. People would like to trust you. But hey, Gus, you know, sales and trust. Have you ever seen those two words in one sentence? So I read, I read a book recently from a, a colleague here. He wrote a book and he said, trust me, I'm in sales, All right? And I'm not talking specific about IT salespeople, but I talk about salespeople in general. So we know that people, you know, you and I, if we go to buy something, a house, a car, a new shoot, whatever it is, we sort of have some resistance to salespeople. And if you ask them, how many people do you trust? Well, not many people do that, right? Because salespeople typically are perceived, true or not true, are perceived as egoistic, selfish, uh, short-term, uh, they want your money in my pocket type of guys, right? So, you know, looking at the pictures, maybe you say, you know, which one is closest to your profile? I'm not sure. Is it the enthusiastic guy in the middle or the guy with the cigarette on the left? Or you might even say, I'm not in the picture at all, Gus, because I'm a different type of salesperson. Or even better, I want to improve myself to be different than these guys. So you must you must have seen this invite, because this is about this webinar, and it says winning more deals by using strong communication templates. And I thought I opened, you know, a bit shocking, saying the IT industry is widely recognized as being unreliable. Right, um, and and the why is well, like I say, there are not many industries where people, salespeople, make promises so easily and so often, and at the same time the follow-up often is so poor. Right, so just as a bit of context, you know, being nice helps. Having a good solution is great. If you have a good solution that is, you know, perceived as great by brand and supported in many countries and what have you, that's all great. But without trust, people will not buy from you. So then the relevant question is, how do you build trust? I know while I say this, that talking about trust, of course, is easier than building trust, right? Uh, and I know that's what you think right now. But I sort of collected a few uh, quotes, right? So the one on the right-hand bottom says, say what you do and do what you say. So if you, before you make a promise, you start thinking, is this something that I can make a promise on in price, in delivery time, in response, in follow-up time, whatever? And if the answer is no, well, the saying says, don't say it. As simple as that. And as soon as you set to do it, then of course, some, then you have to do it. Well, if I would show this to my youngest son, he's 14, he would say, really, daddy, is that what you spend your valuable time on? with people in a webinar from several countries all over the place. Is that what they want to listen to? Because it's, I said, yes, it is. Why you ask? And he said, it's so simple. Just say what you do and do what you say. Well, we know we're not all 14 years old anymore. We're a bit older and we have more experience. We know it's not easy, right? But it says on the left hand top, you are what you do. You're not what you say. So it's interesting. How much time and energy and focus do you put on the saying? And how much time, energy and effort do you put in the doing? 
and we know that prospects will will have the idea oh it's a salesperson difficult to trust and salespeople stop never stop talking they keep on and on and on right so i would say that's a great atmosphere and a great situation if you change yourself and say less and do more and say what you do and do what you say that's a great differentiator that's a great way to set yourself apart from the competition that is saying and not always doing okay so the question then is how do i earn trust and in the picture it says trust is earned when actions meet words so my first question to you on the left is so how good are you in making promises are you the uh -huh type of person if a question comes up sure yes we can of course we do it's all great and super right and that's the easiest part making the promises that's even something my stepmother could do or my 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 grandmother or whatever right i could even send my 14 year old boy for a salary much smaller than yours making promises but probably you're not hired to make promises you're hired to make promises that you can make and then of course uh, fulfill them so do you always do what you say and do you always do what you promise and i said really with a smiley right because always is a lot now i for myself i found out when i started working more than 30 years ago that if i said to do it and i do it now i have to be careful what i say now it makes people sort of happy and sometimes after a dinner party or being in a pub uh, the next morning there's a piece of paper or whatever in my pocket and i think shit i promised somebody somebody something what was it because it's easy to make a promise but it, sometimes it's hard right to understand what you've promised on my age i have to write it down sometimes two times to follow up and then the question is if you do follow up how good are your actions right are you prepared to make offers in improving your actions so talking about building trust and that includes my own experiences is what i call the abc of building trust so when i talk to somebody prospective person company whatever i was trying to find a way to make a simple promise right and the easy thing if you start talking a bit how you do it how was it how's the business doing to sort of ask have you read an, oh i saw an article on that have you seen it and most people don't read so much so they say no i haven't seen it i said i can send you the link you can always throw it away well that's typically a simple promise right that i can simply forget and no problems if i forget to do it but it's simple to follow up and it's simple to fulfill so my way of doing it is find a way from the earliest start to make a simple promise and show that I'm the kind of person that fulfills promises. Is that a way to win a deal? No, of course not. But it's a way to start showing that if you say what you do, you do what you say. If you think about having a meeting that could be face to face, that could be, of course, on the phone, right? You talk about several topics. I try to summarize every topic with an action. So that was interesting. Let's re let's make a small resume. So what is it and who is taking the action? When, how, what, right? Make it smart, specific, measurable, achievable, result bound and result focused and time bound, right? Realistic and time bound. At the end of a meeting, again, either face to face or over the phone, I always take a look at my notes. I write a lot while talking. And I say, let me try to summarize. These are the action points that I wrote down. It, do, I, do I miss some? And then after we say we agree on that it's complete, I say, who's doing what and when do they need it? And then I can say, whoa, that's not possible because I'm traveling or whatever. Will it work from now? We, will that work a week from now or two weeks or whatever or next day? And then, of course, you can confirm the actions. And today it's as simple as it can that you put your laptop, your tablet, your phone, whatever, on the table and you write down when there's an action point and at the end you, you just put send right i found out that building trust is about being complete right so don't say 60 percent of what we talked about is enough it's being consistent so if you don't do it once but do it all the time through the cycle and it really helps ladies and gentlemen i think there's the magic to do it fast really fast people you will surprise people so if you do things like this and you're with three other guys on the shortlist and you're the first one to react or maybe the only one to confirm, you start setting yourself apart in the brain of the customer. 
again, you don't win the deal on day one with that, but at the end, you're the person they start trusting. And then we talk about direct and indirect trust. So you can do this by acting as I said, but you can also um, lean on people that trust you, right? So the better you help people in a certain market uh, and they trust you, you can sort of transfer that trust from your first customer to your second prospect. Well, what happens if you don't do it? Well, you sort of break your promises. I think it's a nice picture. And it's interesting observation for me while traveling around is that in, I think in all of all over the world, the number one competitor for all of us is not SAP, it's not Oracle, it's not Sage, but the number one competitor is no decision. Well, you just delivered your best demo ever and you put in your best pre-sales and you filled in a request for information with hundreds of questions. You spend days and weeks and fortunes to bring these people to the point of choice. And they say, thank you for all your effort. Can you please come back in two years time because we don't take a decision. It's a waste of talent. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. Think what you could have done with other prospects in the same situation. But why do they not take a decision? Because the risk is too high and the trust is too low, right? So think for yourself how many deals ended up in a no decision over the last 12 months for yourself, for your whole sales team, for your whole company, for all the Microsoft channel, it's huge, right? Again, this is not magic. I don't say that using the templates that I'm gonna present in a minute will help you to get 0% of no decision, but I'm pretty sure that we can have more decisions and hopefully good ones. So if you, if you lie to people and I use the Pinocchio, maybe it's not that hard, right? Maybe sometimes, you know, it's not a lie, but it's a bit too late or it's a bit less than you promised or, you know, the functionality is not fully there. You know, do you lose deals on that? I'm not sure. It might be small things, but like Friedrich Nietzsche says, I'm not upset that you lied to me. I'm upset that from now on, I can't believe you anymore. Right? That's where the trust leaves. And we all know that trust, I was the saying, it comes very slowly. It comes sometimes it takes weeks or months or even years to build it, and you can lose trust in a simple second. Okay, one more point is that I want to say a few words about the characteristics of buyers versus sellers. So I thought, let me take a CFO, and I'm I, I'm aware that we have people in the call that mainly do ERP as a focus, but we also have partners that do CRM. And I know that the CFO, I would say, traditionally has a role in ERP decisions uh, where the CFO is not always present in a CRM decision. But at the end, these sort of people could be the CFO, could be the marketing manager. I would say if you look at their characteristics, these people are well-structured, right? They love structure. I would say talking about CFOs on the average, you know, it's black and white, I know, but they're more introvert than extrovert. For sure, CFOs are risk avoiding. These people hate risks. They try to do everything to ban the risks. If you think where their focus is, it's on the long term. You know, what can we achieve over the years? How long can we use the solution? And so on and so further. I would say these people are typicalized as rational people. They like to listen rather than talk, and they look for business value. Well, you might say, Gus, why do you include this slide? Because there's nothing new. Well, I thought it's good to compare the characteristics of a CFO with the characteristic of a salesperson. Again, it's black and white, and I'm not here to insult you, but, you know, generally speaking, you know, salespeople are less structured, and we all know some salespeople are unstructured. Maybe it's yourself. Typically, salespeople are selected being extrovert, right? They rather talk and laugh and make noise, which is a good thing on itself. You know, salespeople like risks. Um, that's more than they're risk avoiding. In general, salespeople are perceived as short-term focused, right? I want to deal as fast as I can. And then I want your pocket, your money in my pocket. And that might, of course, have a relation with bonus schemes. Salespeople are typically... A, uh, uh, perceived as emotional people, you know, talk a lot, and that's part of their job, of course. And they are easy on business value, right? It's relatively easy to say, oh, you make a profit on that, you will improve your bottom line. These are easy words, 
But before a CFO says something like that, they will do, let's say, more work. And they won't say that it's much easy. So, you know, if you want to talk about risk and trust, these are emotions, human emotions. And talking about trust and risk, right, it all today comes up to emotional engagement. Do you engage with the people you talk to? Do they like you? Step one. If not, you're kicked out. Second one, do they trust you? So a fact here is that human beings like people who are like us. So if you think about you traveling in another uh, world and in another uh, country in the world, and you hear people talking your native language, let's say it's, it's not English, but something else, you suddenly feel, wow, hey, that's a person from my country. I have the same language as well. You know, it, we see it with uh, soccer fans, people that like football. They meet somebody never met before, but they wear the same shirt with the same logo and the same colors, and they're friends forever without knowing each other. And, of course, the other way around. You know, the people they have to play against in different shirts, they're, some of them are ready and happy to beat them just because they have, you know, the wrong colors. So we like the people who are like us, and we sort of dislike the people who are not like us. So if you want to be successful as a salesperson, right, and you want to build this emotional engagement, and you don't want to trust on your great company name or your great dynamic solution, you know, it's more effective when you behave like the persona you're trying to sell to. And if that is the CFO, the well-structured, well-informed, rational people, you better get yourself a structure. So that brings me to, let's say, the main part of the call is building trust in your communication. So what we did, we developed a set of template documents that sort of accompanies the complete sales cycle, or you could say the complete buying cycle from a prospect point of view. I've built these templates over the years myself. I've used them myself, and I've you know, um, raped the benefits of, of using the templates. So forgive me if I'm enthusiastic about it, because I know what it can do, right? <clears throat> People tell, people tell me that if you use templates like this, in the way that I'm going to explain you in a minute, you prove that you are a listener. Well, if there's one characteristic, there's one thing that IT salespeople are well known for, for not doing, as again, perception at the customer side, it's listening. Right? You must have found yourself in meetings where the prospect says, can the system do? Oh, yes, it can. Is it possible? Oh, yes, it can. Right? There's some people that say yes before they even listen what the question was. So it's hugely important, based on the things that I said in the context phase, failure is not an option, remember, hugely important that you show that you've listened. And it's not so much that you know that you've listened, but it's more like showing them that you have listened, right? It's not about you, it's about them. Third point is eye for detail. Right? Again, salespeople are well known and perceived for being high level and you know jumping to conclusions and sign up here and whatever. But prospects like that people have an eye for detail. And why do they like that? Well, I can tell you. The salespersons are, of course, one of the most one of the first roles, the first persona you meet if you're a buyer. Right? You might have contact with marketing, but then of course the salespersons are dominant in the pre-sales phase. Well, what people do, and that's sort of the psychology of the buyer, is that they, conscious or unconscious, believe that if the salesperson is a chaotic person, unstructured, always too late, they will feel, see, feel, believe, again, conscious or unconscious, that the implementation team will be too late and unstructured and the help desk as well. And we all know that that's not really good for your chance to win a deal. On the other hand, if the salesperson shows eye for detail, and if the salesperson, although maybe some have to force himself to do it, show structure and speed and follow up, then you have the positives. That's the other side of the coin. Then, conscious or unconscious, your prospect will say, whoa, if the salespersons are so proactive and are so complete and fast, right? then we believe that the implementation team, the consultants, the developers, and the help desk will be the same. Okay, we try to make, build these templates. It's very practical. It teaches some best practices every now and then to prospects on what they have to do. And I think it's, it's important to say that it includes also their areas of interest. Now, this is an interesting one. 
Because if you sit in a demo, you start looking, does it fit, yes or no? Do we have problems, yes or no, depending on the discussions. When I use these documents, I also included a chapter saying, you know, these are the areas where we have a non-fit. And these are the areas where you might have emotional problems or have to change your processes towards the system, right? Well, as a salesperson, it's easy to just ignore that because it might seem negative because it might mean extra investments in customizations or in process changes, which make your offering more expensive. I found out that if you include their areas of interest, even if it's a bit against you, people will love it. What? What? Another thing that I try to do is surpass their expectations. I can tell you most prospects don't expect you to send up follow-up emails this intense. Maybe you do it already. Maybe well, we'll see that in a minute, right? And then it's good to say that these templates are relevant for both marketing and sales. Since we're all aware that today we have the anonymous buyer that will try to stay anonymous and visit your website, but not wanted to talk with salespeople. So I can imagine that some of these templates are used from your marketing department, right? That if people do something, download something, you start sending out documents like this with your marketing automation tool, right? In the same way as your salespeople could use it. So you see now a series of documents, are 13 in this slide. So it starts actually in the beginning. So there is a first meeting, could be by phone, could be face to face, and there's a confirmation document. There's a checklist for this first intake meeting. After the intake meeting, I've, I've been sending a confirmation, like this is what I've learned, this is your situation. Maybe not to teach them somebody something, but to show them that you've been listening carefully. Then there's a workshop or demonstration. So there's a confirmation for the demonstration meeting, right? And if you demo face-to-face -face in the customer side, you all know that it's great if there's a, a projection screen or if there's a wide wall where you can project on. If you didn't check on that, you might find yourself demoing on a wall with uh, two pictures or a wall that is partly yellow and white. Same goes for light. If you ever have been in a demo where the sun was shining through the windows, we don't have that that much in Holland, but maybe you live in a more sunny place, and people cannot see your solution on the screen, it's a lousy demo. Even you have the best software solution in place. Right? So all these small, tiny things are included in this confirmation. And if, of course, after the demonstration, your prospect gets used to it, you send the confirmation. Number six, confirmation of the receipt of a request for proposal. Number seven, the proposal. In between, there's attention letters or attention emails. It's a document about references. And then an important one, number 10, shortly before they take a decision, there's a, a template with a resume, a sort of wrap up. Right? Your prospect have been talking for weeks or months or sometimes years with you, and they might have lost the, the red wire. So this is high level your offering, right? Then there's a letter of intent, an order confirmation, and a press release, which is, in my opinion, a joint press release. So what I want to do now, because the time is limited, I want to show you four of these documents, walk you through, right? And hopefully you get interested and motivated to dive in the other ones afterwards. And please understand that this is not rocket science. This is not magic, right? It's simple. And the, 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 the magic point is maybe in the fact that you do it every day. That is going to become part of your DNA, right? That you start like to doing it. So let me walk you through this very simple document, right? After I have a meeting, I send the confirmation. Again, this could be a digital, right? Online, a meeting over phone or Skype or whatever, or it could be face to face. So I hung up the phone after a phone call and I write, dear Mr. or Mrs. with a name, you fill it in, please. This morning, we briefly discussed the current state of business applications in your company. And I understood your company X is working with solution Y. You showed your interest in having a meeting, again, face-to-face -face or online, to evaluate the possibilities of our successful, let's say, Dynamics 365 so solution for their company. Therefore, we set an appointment, and it's details, ladies and gentlemen, right? Don't laugh at me. It says date and time, and it says bold print. And if I talk about date and time, I don't say September 27, but I say September 27, 2017. No, I'd say Tuesday, September 27, 2017. 
Well, you now may say, okay, Gus, now you're done. Uh, have you drunk too much or whatever? But I'm a strong believer in showing that you have an eye for detail, right? And writing down what it is, right? Where it is, on what date, I believe is super important. 9 and 90 from 100 times, this is okay-ish, right? But maybe no time number 100, then this will be helpful. Important then to say it's in your office at the address in city. Because I've been in situations that people um, didn't tell me that I had to go to another building. Why not in the headquarters? Then it's not my fault, but I tried to, to prevent making mistakes, right? And then I come up with an agenda. You think they ask for an agenda? Of course not. They just say, okay, when are you available? Date, time, location, and that's it. So with the objectives, and they're simple, but I try to do more than they expect. And it's a simple agenda, of course getting acquainted, global assessment, and then sec uh, next steps. If you have an eye for, for detail, you see that the word objectives is in bold, and in all the documents after, they all have an objective. So I try to explain for every document what the objective is, why I do what I do. And then, of course, I'm looking forward to seeing you on a date. Right. You could add your mobile number, right? If you're not, not able to do it, last minute, you're ill, whatever, right? Put in your mobile number. If it's an email, probably it's in your signature. And the question to all of you in the audience is, have you ever been to visit a prospect and were you there? The prospect was not available. Either he expected you on some other place, was ill, not able to reach you, reach out to you, whatever, or they wrote down the session a week after or they wrote down October 27 or Tuesday rather than Wednesday or whatever, right? All small mistakes. I once had a person in training said, I had that, but it was in Munich. So I had to fl a flight, plane and all for nothing, right? And again, even if it always goes well, it shows, you know, that you're proactive. So that's number one. You know, while in this intake, I'm always wondering what salespeople talk about. They go visit and they say, well, nice building. Oh, was that the family portrait? Nice wife and children. Where have you been on skiing holiday? La, 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 la. But at a certain point of time, you start talking really serious. And then where do you start? Do you start yourself? Do you, do you have the driving wheel? Are you waiting? Are you reactive, waiting for the questions to come up? Well, I would say it depends because you, you can never predict how a call will will do, right? And more people on board or not. But I started using my own checklist. And I found out that many people start a call, start a conversation and dive directly in IT. Or if you talk with IT people, they dive directly in the details. But then you might miss the, the bigger picture. So, you know, here's an example and it's just an example with some generic questions, and hopefully you have better questions. But if you start with, you know, the company, you know, the size, number of employees, activities they do, right? If they have several activities, how are the employees distributed? Many locations, you know, what's happening with the company? Are they growing? Are they shrinking? Maybe per activity is important information for you. If they shrink, maybe at the end, they're not able to pay the bill or they might get bankrupt, right? Starts here. What are the financial results? Of course, that has a relation with their, their financial stability as well. And can you check that? Is there an organization scheme available so that you know who you talk to and that you know how many levels you're away from the decision makers? Right? I think a great question is, what are who are the five most important customers that your customer has? So you talk about the customer's customer. Well, some IT people might say, oh, I have no idea. Well, maybe they say, I bring in somebody from the business. And if you then have a few names, you know, your question is, so why did these five great customers choose for your company? So what are your unique buying reasons, right? And of course you can add more questions, but it gives you a clue of what's happening. It gives you a clue of, you know, in let's say the, the, the atmosphere your future customer is, is working in. And then a bit smaller, hopefully your eyes are good enough. It says 1B talking about IT or ICT, a bit deeper, right? With the questions that you're probably more familiar with. What do you have? What do you want to stay? What do you want to want to, uh, to get out and putting something new? But here are also some questions about, you know, how good is the system? So if you look at um, uh, line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, line eight, it says, what is the time available for creating monthly reports? 
So I think it's a great question to ask your organization, how much time do you need every month to do a closing, a month closing? And that's not just by figures, but also analyzing. I call it the rear view mirror, like in a car, right? You got, you can look in front, but you can look in the back with a rear view mirror. And unfortunately, most systems today are rear view systems. They collect historical misleading information. Well, it talks a bit about TCO. So how many people are used for IT administration? How many, many people are doing database administration, report building? How many vacant positions do you have in your IT department, right? And what was the development of the number of people in the past few years in the IT? Probably it's getting up. So that gives you interesting information for total cost of ownership, right? And then number two, weak points in the current system. And number three, objectives in the new system. These are, of course, heavily depending on your vertical market. Since a hospital will come up with different weak points or uh, objectives than a retail company or a lady hairdresser. Right. So these are points you can fill in yourself. Now, I know many of you will say, hey, Gus, come on. I'm in this business for five for 10 or 10 plus years. I'm not a junior anymore. I don't need a checklist. Well, if that's your belief, I would say try to think again. Because I love to use a checklist because it helps me not to forget anything, which is improved quality. And what if I put the, take the logo from my prospect from their website, put it here on, on my checklist, print the checklist with a colored logo. You know, people see the document. They see that I prepared myself. They see that I have an eye for detail. And once again, if the salespeople are proactive and eye for detail, conscious or unconscious, they will believe that the rest of your colleagues would do the same. Well, you might think now, well, my implementation is rubbish <laughs> and my help desk is worse, right? But if you can choose between, you know, losing the deal with a great delivery organization or winning the deal with a bad delivery organization, I think in the beginning, it's all about winning the deal, right? You can improve the other ones afterwards. So document number three, we had the confirmation, we had the checklist. Document number three, I just took out a few, is the receipt of the request for proposal. So let's assume you had your intake, it was okay. Let's assume you get a position on the shortlist. And now they're gonna send out a request for proposal. And what I did is as soon as I receive it by mail, by email, right? As soon as I receive it, I drop everything that I do, take the template and within seconds, minutes maybe, I'll send out this document. And it says, thank you for your interest in let's say QBS, the company name, and our Microsoft Dynamics 365 offering. According to us, this interest is rightly since Microsoft Dynamics 365 combines an unknown flexibility with optimal integration and simplicity in finance and operation or in sales and marketing, whatever you want to fill in. So with this, we confirm the receipt of your request for proposal on the possibilities of Dynamics 365 for your company. Here it comes. Meanwhile, we have created a project team for your project. That's two times project. We have created a team for your project, right? which consists of the next person. And I would suggest you put in your own name as a sales on the second line and the name of your pre-sales consultant, your beloved pre-sales consultant on the first line. And then you say we're willing and able to add additional specialist resources during the process because maybe they want to know about IoT or Power BI or whatever. Right? And then it says we already started working on your request and you can be sure that we will react within the terms you've made. If you write down this, then of course, it's a bit clumsy if you ignore the deadline and are too late, right? So this is a commitment to them, but also a commitment to yourself. And then finally, I would suggest, you know, QBS is happy to make your project into a success, right? Now, what it says basically is we create a project team. Well, you all will do that, but 99% of you will create a project team after the signature when the contract is signed. So what it basically says is we build a pre-sales project team for you and then if you ask me what, what kind of letter is this, what's the aim? The aim is to pay it to pay attention to people, to make them feel respectful, to make them feel important. That's all it is, right? Okay, last from the four I want to show you is a resume email or resume letter short before the decision. And I don't take all of it because it's like two pages. That's too much. You will find it in the in the set of documents. But it says, dear, let's say the person that runs it or maybe the CEO or two of them. And it says, together with your colleagues, you stand on the verge of an important decision. 
After all, the quality of the IT function in your company is more and more a decisive factor when it comes to overall performance or even to disrupt or be disrupted. Since our first contact in Then and Then, we showed you the extensive possibilities of Dynamics 365 and our add-ons in a number of meetings. We also discussed the applicability of your in your organization and we exchanged reasons that support the purchase of our offering. Right before the definitive decision, we deem it useful to briefly summarize these arguments for you. So here's what happens. These guys have been looking to several vendors, starting with 10 from the long list and then three on the short list, then deep dive, have seen many demos, have seen many documents, uh, websites and everything, videos, what have you. These people lost the overview, right? They find themselves looking at tiny details and they sort of miss the overall view. So how nice would it be if you're the salesperson, and again, the only one maybe from the three on the short list, if your competitors are not in this call, this call, if you're the only one showing them the overview. So it says something about user friendliness, about flexibility, about integration, right? You take one by one the most important things from your Dynamics offering. And I came here from letter A to I, right? And the one is commitment to a vertical market, and it says closing remark. So read with me. These days, a reorganization seems to have started in the market for ERP or CRM providers. Analysts predict that this reorganization will continue in 2018 and beyond. This makes it even more important for you to pay attention to the expectations of continuity from future solutions and implementation partners. Well, Microsoft Dynamics 365 and, let's say, QBS are ready for the final test. So this, this letter brought me deals where the managing director you know, after the decision told me, Gus, until five minutes, let's say 15 minutes before the final project team meeting where we had to take a decision, I was confused about either taking your solution or SAP. And really the letter that came in briefly, shortly before the final decision helped me to say this overview, right, makes the decision go to your offering. So I'd say interesting to do and interesting to see if it works for you as well. So just think what the impact could be, right? The impact could be that you win deals that you lost maybe with 1% difference. The impact could be that people get sympathy for you. The impact could be that you wow them, that you surprise them. But then again, this is not just something you can do easily. It has to do with your mindset. It has to do with priorities. If I come home after two days traveling for training, right? I try to prepare my follow-up email with all the documents that I promised, and there's a lot of them, and either send it while people are filling in their evaluation forms in the last five minutes of the training, or I create a document in the plane or in the train, and I come home and I send it. My wife hates it because finally I'm home, but I believe, you know, doing this and surprising people with how fast you do it, it's not just the speed, but it's respect. It's the A from attention. That's what people like. Hmm? I can understand it's if you like this, you say, whoa, interesting. Well, how do you start talking about this with your colleagues if they are not so structured and not so fast, right? That's an interesting point, right? Ideally, I would say it would be great if you do, you embrace this approach with all your team and make the difference based on this. So I hope you still not fall asleep and we come to the call to actions, right? And the call to actions is that we will send you an email later this week with the recording of this session. So the ones in the call that are QBS partners, and there are a lot of you, you will get access to this set of template documents, right? We spent, I spent personally a lot of time and I made a lot of mistakes and I had a lot of hard lessons learned before I, I could write all these documents, but we're happy to share because at QBS we're here to help you. If you're not a QBR partner yet, or not at all, uh, you can buy the um, set uh, and you pay us 300 euros per partner company, right? For the ones who are not QBS partner, the ones who are QBS partners have a membership. They pay us a monthly fee and we think it's valuable for them to get it. And if you're not a QBS partner, you pay 300 euros. Is that a lot of money? Well, it depends. If you win one deal extra because of, let's say, the resume email, or you, you win trust, and because of that, they don't postpone, and it's going to be less no decisions, or you only save 1% discount, you give 1% discount less than you do today, I would think 300 euros is nothing, right? But it's up to you. 
Last point is that we can help you to implement these documents in your organization. And we have done that in combination with an assessment of your current marketing and sales processes. Now we are all aware that people in the cloud buy differently and that people stay anonymous. So in many partner organizations, I think it's relevant to have you know, an assessment on how are you doing your sales and marketing today? Is it still traditional? Is it improved? How do you combine sales and marketing into marketing? Well, we could, I could imagine to do a session with your company on this topic where I explain the documents once again, or one of my colleagues to all your audience with all your sales and marketing people and your sales director included and uh, uh, create a nice uh, foundation for the use of these documents in your organization. Well, that's about it on the content. Uh, we're always interested in your feedback. So if you like your webinar, you cannot stick up a thumb. But in the first slide, you saw my email address. Uh, please let us know. Same for if you have any ideas for future topics. Uh, we try to create these webinars. We don't do it for our own hobby. We do this for you guys. So if you have any points where you say, please uh, consider making a QBS Talks about that, then let us know. Same for other suggestions and all these things you can send to training at qbsgroup.com. And then it says, thank you and happy selling, because I believe that, you know, these documents can help you in the happy selling. I think this should have been the very last slide, but it's not because I have one very last and it shows you the next QBS Talks sessions. So currently there are three planned. Uh, the first one is on the website. The second one we will add this week. So October 9th <coughs> at 4 p.m. Central European time, the Amsterdam time zone, uh, I will uh, deliver a webinar with hot news from Directions EMEA 2017. I think you're all aware of this event. Uh, we will be there with a team of, I think, 23 people. We will write a report again, and I'd like to give you first-hand information the Friday after, the Monday after the Friday that it event ended. So that's hot news. Then there will be on creating a winning quotation because on purpose I took the quotation of this list of documents because that's a webinar on itself. And on uh, December 7th, we'll have a webinar that will help you to optimize the BREP process for the ones who don't know what it is, the business ready enhancement plan. So think about sending your maintenance contract, uh, get your people enthusiastic to sign up for another year and that they pay their money faster. So this last one might be a topic you want to uh, you want to give notice to your finance or operations people because I think it's very important for them, you know, to listen to that webinar if they want. All the details and also for registration you can use the link in the bottom. Well, I look at my solid colleague Sander sitting next to me with big eyes because probably this is the first time in history that I ended up before five o'clock. So that's good for us, it's good for you. I'm not sure if you have any questions. So if you have questions, there is a Q&A box in the bottom. And if you have any questions, then this might be the moment to raise your questions. But if you're a bit shy, or maybe the questions are too personally, and you don't wanna share that with the audience, you can absorb, of course, send me those questions uh, through my email address, it's on the first slide. Okay, having said that, I would like to thank you all for being part of this QBS Talks webinar. Um, I wish you good luck and lots of success by the use of these trust building documents. Um, you know, when you win, we win, Microsoft wins, so that's win, win, win. And looking forward to seeing you soon in one of the next QBS Talks. Have a great evening and speak soon. Bye-bye.